Hi, welcome to day 25 of my 31 day challenge. Um, and uh, well, I've got pretty much for the rest of this week, not tonight, but for the rest of the week, <clears throat> I've been really, it's been really great. I've got people lined up to do interviews right throughout the rest of the week. Um, all, all into next week, which is going to be absolutely brilliant. Lots of really, really exciting people to interview about all manner of uh, things. Going to be talking about, uh, I've got an expert on live streaming going to be talking. We're going to be talking about gender. We're going to be talking about uh, bark flower remedies is one of the topics. We're going to be talking about public speaking. But today, I'm annoyed. In fact, I'm really, really angry because there's been a huge article. And today, the topic I want to deal with um, is all about um an article which has just burst out all over the place, all over the internet today, about it's 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 saying twelve year old boy has changed his gender mind about uh, changing gender. In fact, the more you read into it, the more you can see how this story has been massively sensationalized. Uh, it's basically the story is about uh, this young man. Just to show you here, where this is Patrick Mitchell with his mother. So it's just pop that up so you can see his name there. This is. Patrick Mitchell and his mother. And um, Patrick had, at the age of 12, started cross-gender hormones. So at that point, he was therefore changing his gender and was on the basis of uh, moving across to uh, to becoming a female. And then at the age of 14, um, a triggered apparently by the school beginning to start talking to her, talking about him as a girl, suddenly said, oh, no, 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 this is all wrong. And now wants to change it. But of course, because he's been on cross gender hormones, there have been permanent changes to his body, which now means he's going to have to undergo some breast surgery in order to go back to being a boy. Now, that's the basic story. Young boy gone into transition at a fairly young age <clears throat> and has now changed his mind. So it's actually going to go back. You can imagine the sorts of comments that are coming back. Huge numbers of people stirred up with anger about the whole transgender issue. Kids like this shouldn't, uh, sh yeah, they're too young to do it. They can't do it. Shouldn't be letting kids make this decision. They can't vote. They can't drive. How can they change their gender? This is not going to do any good for any trans people. So I want to put a little bit of the story behind this, because having worked for the past 15 years with people who are transgender, being transgender myself, I understand this whole issue a lot better than most people. And I think uh, this really is, <clears throat> it's been twisted sensationally in a way that is really, really bad. It seems the whole thing started with an article in the Australian magazine, Woman's Day. Um, and from what I can work out there, because I can't get to see the whole of the article, you actually have to get the magazine. That tells me a little bit that maybe Patrick's mother is being paid for this story. Uh, when you then discover actually the big issue is on Sunday, 60 Minutes, the American TV sensational program on Sunday evening is doing a big program about it. And looking at the trailer, my God, have they sensationalized this. Um, it is really designed to stir up dissent, to get people quite angry about the whole issue of trans people. What I'd like to try and do today is just present quickly. I've written a blog post about this as well. It's made me so annoyed because I've worked with trans people. I've worked with parents. I've worked with young people. Um, I do a lot of, you know, a lot of the time I get people contact me, asking me for advice. And certainly in the UK, what has happened to this young man could not happen here or should not happen here. Let me put it this way. If you have enough money, you can buck the system and you can make bad mistakes. And it's almost always when somebody's had the money to pay to go privately and circumvent the system, go much quicker than the system allows, that's when everything goes wrong. Because the system in the UK is designed to prevent this sort of thing from happening. That people go through transition, go through because that's the right thing and it's absolutely checked out. Now, here's what should have happened. Patrick, at the age of seven, uh, has started to uh, express very strongly to his mother that he should be a girl. That happens, happens to me. That's the first age I began to realize it. This was back in 1950. I didn't tell anyone. I kept it a secret, kept it quiet for a long, long time, because back then it was uh, electroconvulsive therapy and all sorts of um, horrible treatment, because then they believed it could be cured. It can't. You're trans, you're trans. That's it. This is a lot of what worries me about what's going on here. Now, he spent all of this time basically wanting to be a girl. At the age of 12, 
begged his mother to make him into a girl, to help him become a girl. They've gone to a gender psychiatrist. They've had all sorts of uh, uh, proper um, counselling. Um, she'd taken him out of school because he was being bullied and had agreed then to put him on hormones. That's the bit I don't understand. So what happens here, you go to the Tavistock Clinic, which is the primary clinic for trans children, and at that, about that age, about the onset of puberty, um, if a child is clearly diagnosed as gender dysphoric, having gender dysphoria, that's the, the medical term, that is a, a, a extreme sense of discomfort with, your, with the body that you're born with. So this is a boy feeling absolutely it should have been a girl's body, girl feeling no, 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 this should have been a boy's body. If that is an extreme sense of feeling of that, and, you know, not all trans people have it at the level where it's, you know, life-threatening, and life-threatening because they might commit suicide, um, then they can get on to treatment, and that treatment usually in this country means hormone blockers. That means what we do is we suspend puberty, pause it. So girls don't start menstruation, don't start growing breasts. They just remain continually growing. They just don't get into puberty. Boys don't get deepening voices, don't get their, their bodies growing bigger and taller uh, and more masculine. So the, the masculinization, the feminization, those processes are uh, suspended while you continue a process of evaluation. Now, the most important thing about that is that the child should be allowed to then live in their new gender. And you know, for all trans treatment, the most important thing is at some point before two years before you get any form of treatment at all, you start living in the new gender. Because if, if that's uncomfortable, if you can't cope with that, if you if you cannot handle what's going on in the world, and it can be pretty brutal, then you don't do it. You don't get into irreversible medical treatment without actually finding out whether you can survive and live in a world being transgender. It's, I wouldn't wish this on anyone. But if you're doing it, you need to be comfortable. You can manage it. You can cope with that. You're going to get bullied. You're going to get some problems. I wish it wasn't, and we're going to try and do everything we can to stop it. There's laws in place to stop it. But the reality is it isn't going to be easy. Now, this didn't happen. It seems that Patrick has been able to start hormone treatment without actually living properly as a girl. He started to grow his hair out. But how come he wasn't being treated as a girl? How come it was 14 before he suddenly feels uncomfortable when the teacher says all the girls, you know, one being one of the girls? Uh, there's something went wrong there. This shouldn't have happened. So what happens normally here is a child goes through the process, then around about 14, if the child is fairly clearly comfortable in their gender, comfortable that they now are the girl or boy, they feel in their head they should have been, their gender identity is now going to be matched. The body will start to be changed. Hormone treatment at 16, you can have full surgery. By 18, they're living comfortably in their new gender. And frankly, they could probably live and nobody would even know that they had changed gender. That's how good the surgery and the support is now, certainly for trans women. Even trans boys, it, you, know, you wouldn't know. I'm, I meet trans men all the time. Never know unless they tell me that they've actually changed gender. So this is what I don't understand. How do we get to the point where somebody at the age of 14 is now having to have surgery to reverse a process that should never have even started at that age? Now, here's the thing I also know. And this is the problem that often happens with young trans girls. Somebody is wanting to live as a girl, but they have a boy's body. They start the process, they start living as a girl, they start hormone treatment, they start you know, suspend puberty. And maybe, yeah, and this is what we find happen quite a lot with young young trans girls. They would get to 14, you know, 13, 14, 15, 16, they're beginning to start you know, engaging in relationships or wanting to engage in relationships. And suddenly they find you know, that the straight boys don't want to even be seen dating a trans girl. If people know someone is trans, they don't want to know. Have you seen that? You may have seen the documentary with Jazz Jennings. Biggest problem for the parents was she got to 14, 15, 16. She's starting to engage with boys, starting to talk to boys, starting to want relationships with boys. They know that's a problem. My God, in Brazil, 200 trans women every year are murdered, mostly because they're in the sex industry and they're beaten to death or shot to death by people who thought that they were women um, because they were in, in the sex industry. 
Now, why would you support a child going through all this process? This is what people say. Why don't you leave all this until they're 18 and they can make decisions? Well, that's all about puberty as well. You see, when we look at the statistics, about 50% of young people who are trans attempt to kill themselves, try suicide, 50%. But it's worse than that. Because when you look deeper into those statistics, what we find is that children who don't get support from their families and from their friends and from their schools, those children who are isolated because they're trans are four times more likely to attempt suicide than the children who get support. So what we start to find is that if you are a child who doesn't get support, you're 80% likely to attempt suicide, more likely to self-harm, more likely to end up on drugs, more likely to go into the sex industry and be involved in sex, uh, you know, sex work. Those are the problems because those kids have to survive for themselves. They leave home much earlier because the parents throw them out, don't want to know them. And so in order to survive, the only thing they have to sell is their bodies. They want to try and raise money for, uh, for surgery. And the only way they can get that kind of money is to sell themselves into the sex industry. It's a horrific route to go. Supporting children is the only way. Taking them down a path and helping them and helping to avoid the challenges, it's the only way. This hasn't happened. This child has been put on this path far too early. Not enough care has been taken to make sure that it really was the right path. And you, I suspect he's got to 14 and fine, can't get a boyfriend because straight boys don't want to know. And the gay boys want him to be a boy. And that is what we had. Two or three people were when I was running a, a service. Two or three of the trans women, young trans women, had said, "I'm going to go back to being a boy because I can get a boyfriend if I'm a gay boy, and they can still wear dresses, still wear skirts, still be very feminine, and just be a very camp gay boy." And that's the route that a lot of them take, simply because they can't get relationships if they are trans, unless they can actually get to the point where they've had surgery, no voice problems, and they look and pass completely 100% as girls. And I know quite a few. I know trans women who have actually got married, never told a soul, not even their husband, that they were born male. Because if they did, the chances of actually getting a relationship are very, very low. So there we go. My rant over today, because it is a bit of a rant, I know. I'm really angry about this uh, this story. I think it's going to stir things up hugely. It's going to make a lot of people very angry and try to, uh, to address the whole issue of you know, trans children shouldn't be treated properly. That is wrong. All we'll do then is end up with a huge amount more anguish and death and, and challenges. Let's try and understand. This is not something anybody would want to wish on anyone. What trans people need is a whole lot of support, but it needs to be done carefully. Mistakes like this are so terrible, it should never happen. Okay, my run over for the day. Please come and join at eSpeaker Live. Don't forget, um, got somebody put, posted um, one of their uh, videos uh, yesterday, which is really, really great. I uh, made a few comments on that. If you're doing live shows, just put them on there. Come on, we want to see your live videos on uh, eSpeaker uh, e -speaker Live on Facebook. Just search for it on Facebook. You'll find it there. And I should be back tomorrow. Tomorrow I'm interviewing Bev Hepting. Uh, I know Bev from Virtual Speaking Pro. She's a public speaking uh, coach, uh, and she's beginning to use live video um, in her work. So we're going to talk a little bit about how she's doing that uh, and where she sees it all going. That's going to be quite early tomorrow morning because I'm going out for the day. So I shall see you tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock or pop in and catch one of the uh, the replays. Nice to see you. Have a great night. Take care.